こんにちは、皆さん。お元気ですかお元気です。です。です。です。です。です。です。です。You know what? Let's, let's not just, let's, let's just stick to hello from now on. Let's just never bother with that again. I've exhausted all the languages I know how to say hello in anyway, I think. Possibly. Ni hao. But, uh, I'm terrible with that. Anyway. Salamat datang. Anyway, um, Today is the last day of Terry Pratchett week.、Uh, and I'm feeling so sad. This will be the last time we will ever see Terry Pratchett week until the next time I do this, which will probably be in about a month's time, maybe even less than that, maybe even just two weeks or next week after this week. Who knows? Maybe I'll do one right after this. No, I won't. Anyway, <clears throat> today's book for Terry Pratchett week is going to be Going Postal. Uh, part of the Discworld series. It's,、uh, it's, it's, it's one of the newer ones with、um, a new main character arc,、uh, Moist von Lipwig.、Uh, or Lipwig.、Um, it's,、uh, yeah, this is one of, this is,、uh, um, I'm not normally a fan of the new, what am I saying? I'm not normally a fan of new things. What, <laughs>、uh, the, I mean, there's, the,、um, there's three arcs I enjoy. The Rincewind Arc, or the Wizard's Arc, as they are known now.、Uh, Death's Arcs,、uh, Story Arcs, and, and The Watch, who have received a lot, a lot of books based around their antics. And、uh, normally, if, if the Discworld novels are not about those, two, those, one of those three, I don't really like them that much.、Um, but this, this I enjoy. It's,、uh, Uh, along with、um, the, the, the other one, the one、uh, based around、um, Discworld getting their first newspaper, which, whose name currently escapes me, but I'm sure it will be part of the next Terry Pratchett week when I get around to it. Anyway, let's. Uh, uh, oh, sorry.、Uh, and what is this book about? Well, <clears throat> let's have a look at the back cover, shall we? Moist von Lipwick is a con artist and a fraud and a man faced with a life, tr- with a life choice. Be hanged or put Ankh-Morpork's ailing postal service back on its feet. It's a tough decision. But he's got to see that the mail gets through. Come rain, hail, fleet, dogs, the post office workers' friendly and benevolent society, and the evil chairman of the Grand Trunk Semaphore Company, and a midnight killer. Getting a date with Adora Bell Deerhart would be nice, too. So. There we are. It's, it's about a con artist trying to restart the postal service in Ag Morpork. And in a way, it's about the history of the postal service and、uh, its struggles to be relevant in a society where people are going for more fancy forms of communication, in, which, in, in this case, the、uh, Grand Trunk Semaphore Company, which is like,、uh, it's like, it's like the internet only with semaphore. If that makes sense. Oh,、uh, and what's Semaphore? Semaphore is a series of,、um, in this case, not, it's not flag positions, but、uh, light positions, basically. So、uh, if, you, if you make the light go in a certain way, it will deliver different messages, much like the internet using electricity. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Read the book. Read the goddamn book, and you shall know. So let's do the usual thing. Let's、uh, skip to. Oh, there's significantly more words on each page now. Maybe I, should,、uh, maybe I could stick to doing one page this time. Now, now we've been doing two pages for a while now. Let's, let's, let's go ahead with two pages. Maybe in the future, if there's too many words, I'll just do two passes. I'll probably still do three passes. Okay. <clears throat> page 266 and 267, which starts in the middle of the sentence and ends in the middle of the sentence. <clears throat> anyway, let's do this. Schemes, you swindled the man in front of you, looking him sincerely in the eyes. The picture was good, though, he had to admit. The rearing horse, the winged hat, and above all, the slight blurring with speed. It was impressive. He relaxed a little. The place was operating, after all. 
letters were being posted, mail was being delivered. Okay, so a major part of it all was that the clax wasn't working properly, but maybe in time, people would see that a letter to your sister in Stolat didn't need to cost 30 pence, so maybe get there in an hour, but might as well cost a mere 5 pence to be sent there in the morning. I didn't read that sentence right. Uh, let's, uh, okay, so a major part of it was that the clacks weren't working properly, wasn't working properly, but maybe in time people would see that a letter to your sister in Stolat didn't need to cost 30 pence to maybe get in an hour, get there in an hour, but might as well cost a mere 5 pence to be there in the morning. Stanley knocked at the door and then pushed it open. Cup of tea, Mr. Litvick, he said, and a bun, sir. You're an angel in heavy disguise, Stanley, said Moist, sitting back with care and wincing. Yes, thank you, sir, said Stanley solemnly. Got some messages for you, sir. Thank you, Stanley, said Moist. There was a lengthy pause until he remembered that this was Stanley he was talking to and added, Please tell me what they are, Stanley. Ah, uh, the golem lady came in and said, Stanley closed his eyes, Tell the streak of lightning he'll have another eight golems in the morning, and if he's not too busy working miracles, I'll accept his invitation tonight to dine at eight at Le Foy Hero. Hero? God, I don't know my French. Uh, H-E-U-R-E-U-X. Hero. I'm, I'm assuming because French doesn't like to pronounce the end of words because they're lazy, you know. That's that's my theory on the French language. Ugh, I'm so lazy. I don't, I don't, you know, all uh, we have words ending with S's and X's. And I'm just too lazy to pronounce them, you know. I'm just uh, just going to go, Le horror. Yes, that's very good. Everything just flows together like, like nostrils on my face. Oh, je quoi. I don't know what any of that meant. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll accept his invitation to dine at eight at Le Foy Hero, meeting at the Menda Drum at seven. The happy liver? Are you sure? But of course, it would be correct. This was Stanley. Ha! Huh. Even the damn soup there is fifteen dollars, said Moist. And you have to wait three weeks for an appointment to be considered for a booking. They weigh your wallet. How does she think I... His eyes fell on Mr. Robinson's box, sitting innocently in the corner of the office. He liked Miss Dearheart. Most people were accessible. Sooner or later, you could find the springs that worked them. Even Miss Macca... Oh, boy. Macalariat? Macca... Macalariat? Oh, dear Lord. M-A-C-C-A-L-A-R-I-A-T. Maca, ma, Maca, Macalariot. Is that a common English name? Or or is it just a ma name that Terry Pratchett made up uh, in his book? Then again, I thought for a while that Pratchett was a made up word, made up name. Is it a made up name? I, I don't know. <coughs> even Miss, even Miss Macalariot would have a lever somewhere, although it was a horrible thought. But Adora Bell fought back. And to make sure, fought back. And to make sh and to make sure fought back even before she was attacked. A oh, sorry. And to make sure fought back even no, there's a word missing there. And to make sure she fought back even before she was attacked. I'm sure it's meant to be a she there, unless it's meant to be fancy that way. And to make sure fought back even before she was attacked. That doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. She was a challenge, and therefore fascinating. She was so cynical, so. Defensive, so spiky, and he had a feeling that she could read him. And he had a feeling she could read him much, much better than he read her. All in all, she was intriguing, and looked good in a severely plain dress. Don't forget about that bit. Okay, thank you, Stanley. He said. Anything else? The boy put a sheet of slightly damp, greeny green, greeny gray stamps on the desk. The first dollar stamp, sir. He announced. My word, Mr. Spools has done a good job here, said Moist, staring at the hundreds of little green pictures of the university's Tower of Art. It even looks worth a dollar. It, ev it even looks worth a dollar. Yes, sir, you hardly noticed a little man jumping from the top, said Stanley. Moist, sta Moist snatched the sheet from the boy's hand. What? Where? 
you need a magnifying glass, sir, and it's only on a few of them. Uh, in some of them, he's in the water. Uh, Mr. Spools is very sorry, sir. He says it may be some kind of induced magic. I you know, sir, like even a picture of a wizard's tower might be a bit magical itself. Uh, there's a few faults and some of the... And the sentence ends there. All right. That was good for a first pass, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Reading it slow works a lot. <clears throat> Reading it in character works a lot. Some of the names really trip me up, especially the ones which are in a f dirty foreign language. Ah, dirty foreign language. How dare they? How dare they? I'm a very strange person. Anyway, um... Yeah, we will we'll, we'll, we'll do a second pass. So, second pass in the middle of a sentence. God, okay. Schemes. You swindled the man in front of you, looking him sincerely in the eyes. The picture was good, too. The picture was good, though, he had to admit. The rearing horse, the winged hat, and above all else, the slight blurring with speed. It was impressive. He relaxed a little. The place was operating, after all. Letters were being posted. Mail was being delivered. Okay, so a major part of it all was that the clax wasn't working properly. But maybe maybe in time, people would see that a letter to your sister and still that didn't need to cost 30 pence to maybe get there in an hour. But might as well cost a mere 5 pence to be there in the morning. And I screwed that sentence up. Damn that fucking sentence. It's uh it's a long sentence and it goes through several thoughts. And I just I just get confused halfway and go, oh wait, oh no, oh da, 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 that kind of thing. Okay, so a major part of it was all was Okay, so a major part of it all was that the clax wasn't working properly, but maybe in time people would see that a letter to your sister and still at didn't need to cost thirty pence to maybe get there in an hour. Might as well cost a mere five pence to be there in the morning. Stanley knocked at the door. Stanley knocked at the door and then pushed in op and then pushed it open. Stanley knocked at the door and then pushed it open. Ah. Stanley knocked at the door. At the door. At the door. At the door. I wonder if there's a trick to making that sound smoother. At the door. 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 No. That's slurring. But recently I found out slurring is an acceptable part, part of uh, narration. So that's weird. That's really weird to know. <clears throat> but we'll try it again. Uh, Stanley knocked at the door and then pushed it open. And then pushed it open. Cup of tea, Mr. Lipwick, he said. And a bun, sir. You're an angel in heavy disguise, Stanley, said Moist, sitting back with care and wincing. Yes, thank you, sir, said Stanley uh, solemnly. Got some messages for you, sir. Thank you, Stanley, said Moist. There was a lengthy pause until he remembered that this was Stanley he was talking to, and added, Please tell me what they are, Stanley. Ah, uh, the Gollum lady came in and said, Stanley closed his eyes, Tell the streak of lightning he'll have another eight Gollums in the morning, and if he's not too busy working miracles... I'll accept his invitation to dine at eight at Le Foy Hero, meeting at the Mender Drum at seven. The happy liver? Are you sure? But of course, it would be correct. This was Stanley. <laughs> Not even the damn s <laughs> even the damn soup there is fifteen dollars, said Moist. And you have to wait three weeks for an appointment to be considered for a booking. They weigh your wallet. How does she think I? And there's a weird pause in the middle there because I went from one page to the other. <laughs> Even the damn soup there is fifteen dollars, said Moist. And you have to wait there three weeks for an appointment. For for an appointment. For an appointment. Yeesh. And you have to wait there for and you have to wait there for three weeks for an appointment. For an appointment. Ugh. For an appointment to be considered for a booking. They weigh your wallet. How does she think I his eye fell on Mr. Robinson's box, sitting innocently in the corner of the office. He liked Miss Dearheart. Most people were accessible. 
sooner or later you could find the springs that worked them. Even Miss McAlariot could have a le would have a lever somewhere, even though it was a horrible thought. But Adora Bell fought back, and to make sure, fought back even before she was attacked. Yeah, that makes sense. And to make sure, fought back even before she was attacked. She was a challenge, and therefore fascinating. She was so cynical, so defensive, so... spiky. And he had a feeling she could read him much, much better than he could read her. All in all, she was intriguing, and looked good in a severely plain dress, don't forget that bit. Okay, thank you, Stanley, he said. Anything else? The boy put a sheet of slightly damp, greeny-gray stamps on the desk. On the desk. The boy put a sheet of slightly damp, greeny-gray stamps on the desk. The first dollar stamp, sir, he announced. My word, Mr. Spools has done a good job here, said Moist, staring at the hundreds of little green pictures of the university's Tower of Art. It even looks, it even looks worth a dollar. Uh, yes, sir, you hardly noticed the little man jumping off the rope. Sorry, you hardly noticed the little man jumping from the top, said Stanley. Moist snatched a sheet from the boy's hand. What? Where? Uh, you need a magnifying glass, sir, and it's only on a few of them. Uh, in some of them, he's... In some of them, he's in the water. Uh, Mr. Pools is very sorry, sir. He, he says it may be some kind of induced magic. Uh, you know, sir, like even a picture of a wizard's tower might be a little magical itself. Uh, there's a few faults in some of the... And the sentence ends there. Uh, apart from a few pauses here and there for me indulging in a few of the strangeness of my pronunciations, that was not too horrible. That was not too horrible at all. Um, shall we do silly voices then? Third pass, silly voices, skeletal voice even. <laughs> it's going to be skeletal voice. Okay, here we go. Schemes! You swindle the man in front of you, looking him sincerely in the eyes! This is not Skeletor at all, I don't know. It's pretty close, though. The picture was good, though. He had to admit the, the winged hat, and above all, the slight blurring with speed. It was impressive. He relaxed a little. The place was operating, after all. Letters were being posted. Letters were being posted, mail was being delivered, okay, so a major part of it was all was that the clax wasn't working properly, but maybe in time, people would see that a letter to your sister in Stolat didn't need to cost 30 pence, so to maybe get there in an hour, but might as well cost a mere 5 pence to be there in the morning. Stanley knocked at the door, and then pushed it open. Cup of tea, Mr. Lipwick, he said, and a bun, sir. You're an angel in heavy disguise, Stanley, said Moist, sitting back with care and wincing. Yes, thank you, sir, said, Stan said Stanley solemnly. Got some messages for you, sir. Thank you, Stanley, said Moist. There was a lengthy pause until he remembered that this was Stanley he was talking to, and added, and added, please tell me what they are, Stanley. Uh... The golem lady came in and said, Stanley closed his eyes, tell the streak of lightning he'll have another eight golems in the morning, and if he's not too busy working... <coughs> ah, ah. Try it again. And if he's not too busy working miracles, I'll accept his invitation to dine at eight at La Foy Hero, meeting at the Mended Dum... Mended... <laughs> Mended Dum? Mended Drum at seven. The happy liver... Are you sure? But of course, it would be correct. This was Stanley. Ha! Even the damn soup there is fifteen dollars, said Moist. And you have to wait three weeks for an appointment to be considered for a booking. They weigh your wallet. How does she think I... His eye fell on Mr. Robinson's box, sitting innocently in the corner of the office. He liked... Mr. Hart, some people were accessible. Sooner or later, you could find the springs that worked them. Even Miss Macalariot would have a lever some would have a lever somewhere. I get, 
I don't know which one I want to say. Lever or lever? Lever or lever? I switch between the two. I, I can never pick which one I want until I reach the word and go, lever, 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 lever. And then, uh, and then I make some kind of weird combination to lever, lever. And that's, and that's terrible. I should learn to just pick one and stick to one. <clears throat> Even Miss McAlariot would have a lever somewhere, although it was a horrible thought. But Adora Bell fought back, and to make sure, fought back even before she was attacked. She was a challenge, and therefore fascinating. She was so cynical, so defensive, so... spiky. And he had a feeling that she could read him much, much better than he read her. All in all, she was intriguing and looked good in a severely plain dress. Don't forget that bit. Don't forget that bit. That's hilarious. I forgot the bit at the end of that sentence. So it's kind of hilarious. And looked good in a, and looked good in a severely plain dress. Don't forget that bit. Okay, thank you, Stanley, he said. Anything else? The boy put a sheet of slightly damp greeny-gray stamps on the desk. The first dollar stamp, sir, he announced. My word, Mr. Spools has done a good job here, said Moist, staring at the hundreds of little green pictures of the university's Tower of Art. It even, it even looks worth a dollar. Yes, sir, you hardly noticed the little man jumping from the top, said Stanley. Moist snatched the sheet from the boy's hand. What? Where? You need a magnifying glass, sir, and it's only on a few of them. In some of them, he's in the water. Mr. Spools is very sorry, sir. He says it might be some kind of induced magic. Uh, you know, sir, like even a picture of a wizard's tower might be a bit magical itself. There's a few faults on some of the end. Sentence ends there. And that's the end of, that's the end of Cherry Pratchett Week. It's been a good week. I've been enjoying reading these things out loud. It's 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 actually been the most fun I've had so far. It's uh, the writing is filled with character. There's a lot of books out there where when it where the dialogue is sparkling and wonderful, but when it comes to descriptions, is it, it's like and then he opened the door and then he shut the door and then he sat down and looked out the window and his expression was sad because he was sad, and it's just boring. Really incredibly boring. The it's it, you're you're not trying to write a script where where, where you're you're trying to read a write, write um blocking for the actors to follow. It's it, make make it fun. Make the descriptions fun. The, the, the narration should not be boring. Narration should not be boring. Um. Uh, the, 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 yeah, that's that's all I can say. Uh, really, don't don't make narration boring. Because if it's boring, then I'm going to be bored reading it. So, like, yeah. But anyway, uh, that was Day 34, uh, Going Postal by Terry Pratchett, part of the Discworld series. Tomorrow is going to be another Mystery Book Challenge. Mystery Book Challenge number five, Day 35. Uh, be there. Be there to guess what the book is. If you can guess what the book is, you can message me and I will give you a 30-second message. Or in some cases, a minute-long message because some people have been giving me um, entire poems to read. But I don't mind too much as long as it's not too much over 30 seconds or what have you. Anyway, um... Hope you enjoy this. See you tomorrow for the Mystery Book Challenge.